Good morning, everybody. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to the School of Intercession. Global Ministry Prayer Talk Show. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Guys, I am so excited. We've been waiting for some time for this prayer talk show called The Virtuous Woman. At this time, I want y'all to enjoy the praise and worship because I want you to give you an opportunity to tune in and to get your girlfriend, get your best friend, get your daughter, get your sisters in the kingdom and share this powerful anointed teacher teaching today. Also, guess who I have at the studio with me? Attorney Ashley Jefferson. Glory be unto God. God. This is going to be a powerful talk show. I've been knowing this woman of God for a few years, and I see the character of Christ of a virtuous woman. She has a lot to impart, a lot to share, and guess what? I am still growing in the Lord. No one does not master all things. So I'm about to learn something as well to add on to my walk as a virtuous woman. So I want you guys, sit down, share, take notes. Because God is looking for virtuous women to walk this earth to fulfill the call of the Lord. It makes it doesn't make sense to try to do God's will, but you don't have his character. You don't have his character. So we want to make sure that we are lined up to Proverbs 31. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to share, to share as I go in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we bless you, we honor you, we glorify you. We magnify your name. And we ask Heavenly Father, Father God, for you to take over this prayer talk show. We ask Heavenly Father, and oh, she can get it also. Father God, that your spirit, Heavenly Father, will minister God to us, so oh God. And Father God, will change us, so oh God, from glory to glory. We ask Heavenly Father, let the words of the Lord God that is spoken through, oh God, attorney, oh God, Ashley Jefferson, oh God. Make an impact, oh God, on us today. Father, we consider it done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So welcome, woman of God. Thank you. Thank you. So welcome, welcome. I am so excited to have this conversation with you all and with this powerful woman of God, um, Ashley Jefferson. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, tell the people a little bit about you. Um, she's going to introduce herself and tell you guys a little bit about herself. Amen. Um, well, thank you for such a gracious introduction. Thank you for the opportunity and thinking allowing God to put you on my heart for this prayer talk show. Um, it came as a surprise, um, and it's an honor. Amen. And, of course, you know, we all we both love sitting down talking together. Amen. Because any time we sit down and talk, we can come for what should be 15-minute conversation. <laughs> and once we sit down, <laughs> oh, wow, <laughs> two or three hours have passed, and God just always shows up. Um, in our conversations to give us both wisdom and revelation about Amen. what we're doing in our lives and we always live full so it's always a special treat for me to come and sit and talk with you. Amen. Amen. Um, of course um, as the woman of God said I'm Ashley Jefferson. Um, I'm a, God's attorney in the earth. Um, I've been an attorney it's going on a year now and um, I was born in Memphis, <laughs> raised. Um, I lived in Knoxville for a period of three years while I was in law school. Um, I'm the proud mother of Jackson Alexander Yay, McGee. Jackson. Um, I would say I'm a devoted daughter, a faithful friend, and a loving mother. And uh, most important, a child of God. And uh, that's what's most important to me. Um, 
Amen. And that's about it. I mean, I practice here and um, my law practice focuses on landlord, landlord tenant, bankruptcy and real estate and business law. Um, and my practice here is in the vicinity. Um, but yeah, that's it. Amen, amen. And another thing she forgot to say, she is a powerful intercessor. Yes. She's an intercessor for the kingdom of God. Well, we thank you so much for letting the audience get to know you a little bit better on a personal level as well as her um, spiritual resume in heaven. So it's an honor to hear what the spirit of the Lord is going to pour out upon us today. So our first question Oh, hot and seat. <laughs> <laughs> that we would like to ask you that you can impart to the women of God today, to us today. Mm -hmm. What is a virtuous woman? Or give us some qualities of a virtuous woman. Right. I think, you know, when I looked at these questions, with this particular question, what came to me is it's not in what she does. Mm -hmm. It's who she is. Mm -hmm. Because it's about her living up and reflecting the character of God in every area of her life. Um, I did take it a step further. You know, you want to know in the secular world what does virtuous mean? And it was very interesting in that you got these characteristics of noble, free from anything petty, mean, dubious um, conduct or character. So, you know, you think about petty as the word, you know, that right. we say, oh, you're being petty, and we think that's something noble, you know, mm -hmm. and humorous, and um, a label that we affix, oh, I'm just being petty. Well, no, that goes against, that's contradictory to noble. Right. And it's those things that we just embrace from the world, and we really don't know that's contradictory to who God says we are. Amen. And so, um, it's righteous, morally good, excellent, trustworthy. Um, and what, what I found was most interesting, she's ethical but not legalistic or religious. Mm -hmm. That means what these character traits, they come from a pure place mm -hmm. and it comes out of relationship with Christ and right. it's not performance yes. for what people can see. And what God impressed upon my heart, she's righteous. And we know righteous means that that's God's way of doing things. Mm -hmm. And so the definition that I personally wrote that a virtuous woman is submitted to God God's way of doing things in every area of her life. It's not a means to an end. It's an outflow of her relationship with God, and it is reflected in the way she acts, the way she thinks, and the way she speaks. Amen. Amen. And when the woman of God, she mentions about that this virtuous woman is not religious, and what she, as she explained, what she meant about that, that she does not operate out of performance. Um, she doesn't have a religious mindset, but she is a godly woman. She is a godly woman that is submitted to um, the Lord's will. Because there is there's a such thing as having a religious spirit, meaning a person can have a form of godliness. So that's what she meant. She has a form of godliness, but she denied the power thereof or does not walk in the power of God. So that's what she means about not being religious based on a unclean religious spirit, just doing things out of performance and not doing things out of relationship. So I bless God for that understanding of a virtuous woman. Also, before we go to our next question, I want to read Proverbs 31. I'm going to read that to us and we'll go to our next question, woman of God. Proverbs 31, and I'm going to start with verse 10, and I'm going to read. A wife of noble character who can find, she is, far, she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flair and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night, and she provides food for her family and 
portions for her female slaves. She considers a field and buys it out of her earning. She plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong in her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the staff and grasps the splendor with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hand to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes clothing for her bed and she is, she is clothed with fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom. And faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the fair of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and they call her blessed. Her husband, all, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you suppresses them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is flattering, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. So I wanted to um, make sure we read the scripture out loud about a virtuous woman. Let's go in deeper, woman of God. Right, let's, let's go, go. in deeper. My next question that I would like to ask to you, what does it mean to be a strong woman of God? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> we hear that a lot. Yes, You're a strong does. woman of God. What yes. does it mean to be, and some people say, you're a strong woman. But what does that mean to be a strong woman of God? Right. I think that is such a broad Mm -hmm. Term, mm -hmm. um, but when I contemplated it, what does that mean? That means if I could get an analogy out of using myself um, in technology, you have a computer. A mm -hmm. computer functions with a processor. Mm -hmm. Okay, the computer functions based off a server. Mm -hmm. God is the server. I'm the computer. The computer can do nothing mm -hmm. absent of that server, mm -hmm. and so. Um, a virtuous woman, you know, a strong woman is a woman who knows, who moves in God's strength and not her own. Um, she recognizes her power source and remains connected That's to good. the power source. Because when she loses that connection to the power source, she no longer is functional for her purpose. And so um, when you think about that, it is recognizing that, okay, this the, nothing that we do and nothing that I do in life, um, I there was a period of time, just to be transparent, that you get in your own strength because yes. of the world's way, you know, to say, oh, I'm grinding, I'm hustling, I'm making it happen. And that's just not vocabulary that's reflective of a woman um, who is submitted to God. Um, because this thing is, it's just that, his word says, you know, the branch is nothing without the vine. That is good. Absent of him, we can have no good thing. And it's coming to a point of surrendering and recognizing that. And the thing is, it's just that when we do begin to work in our own strength and we're strong on our own, you're exhausted. And I remember those seasons in my life where, oh, I got to do this, I have to do this, I have to do that, oh, I'm going to do this. And, you know, whether that's in your personal, even your spiritual life, professionally, yes. you can become burnt out. And the thing is, it's just that one God, you're doing it on your own. He wants to, us to partner with him. 
and he will show because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He gives us grace to do the things that we are called to do. And the ideal is that he gets glory back from whatever it is we do. And in that season of my life, in my younger years, it was, I was getting the glory because I got the promotion. Yes. You know, I worked hard. I did this. I, I, I. And that's from a place of pride. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it takes, you have to get low mm -hmm. and acknowledge that, no, I'm not in this alone. We're partnering with God and Holy Spirit. And he's the one who leads us into all things and gives us truth in all things. And what I found was that um, we draw our strength from him in his presence. Yes. Um, that's where we get the strength to do the great things that he's given us yes. to do. Um, Amen. 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 I truly, truly like that. Um, analogy she made and the definition of a strong woman of strong woman of God because a lot of times especially in the secular world people will say you strong well a person in Christ is only strong through the strength of the Lord it is his strength as she mentioned and like she said if you don't if we don't stay Connected and it's all this. This is all about us being a virtuous woman Being that virtuous woman that our strength is connected to him So I love her analogy because a lot of We have been guilty even when we have became born again That we will try to do things in our own strength we will try to do things in our own way as if we have more knowledge than our Lord. And we have to remember, wait a minute, the knowledge that I do have, it came from him. Exactly. The wisdom that I do carry, it is his wisdom. So why don't I lean to the one that created me? And then sometimes we can get in trouble where we can begin to follow the wisdom of somebody in the bloodline that was yes. ungodly. Yes. And we tried to carry that in our professional walk. And our, we saw great grandmama do it or this person do it. Yes. But does that line up to the character of being a virtuous woman in the eyes of glory? So I love that definition because what the Lord was using her to, to say to us is a strong woman's a person totally dependent on God. Totally depending on, and I'm going to say this, it's okay that as women, even though we are strong in the Lord, just because we cry doesn't mean we're not strong. That's part of our humanity and humility. God, I can't do this without you. To my father in heaven, father, I need your strength. Because when I'm weak, he is made strong. He is made strong. He is my strength. Yes. How you're able to do what you do is because it is the strength of the Lord. I got to this place in God all because of his supernatural strength. Yes. All because of his supernatural grace. And it is being totally humble, as she just said, meaning that Rashida... You are sold out to the perfect will of the Father. And if you're going to be sold out to his will and to his purpose, you're going to have to humble yourself up under him and let him be strong through you. You're going to have to let him be a father to you. You're going to have to let him take care of business. So I love that definition. Uh, another thing I wanted to say about a strong woman She's a woman who is easily identified, backing up what she said, with walking in God's strength and endurance. Mm. Endurance. <laughs> and that was one of my notes. She can endure long suffering to yes. know how to suffer long, to endure hardness like a good soldier. Ha 
Come on now. You know, because the thing is, is that, you know, it takes the strength of God because we all have seasons in life mm -hmm. in which we go through things and it's just not something you can get in a prayer line and someone lay hands on you and knock you out. You have to endure that mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it comes from God and you have to do it without complaining, mm -hmm. murmuring, That's good. saying the wrong things. What we say and how we respond in those seasons depends on, that determines how we move into the next. And we saw that with the children of Israel right. on their way to the promised land. Mm -hmm. They got right up to it and then began to say the wrong stuff. They mm -hmm. couldn't keep their mouth shut. Mm -hmm. You <laughs> and, can sabotage. Yes, exactly. And so the strength comes from, okay, this is where I'm at. Do you like, do we do we enjoy those seasons? No, we don't. Let's just be honest. Nobody likes it. And I've gone through seasons where I just told the Lord, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. This seems unfair. And you ask the questions, why? And he, he receives that. He wants us to put that, you know, meekness is not weakness. Humbly come before, humbly come before him. Yes. You know, I don't like this. And, and be honest with him about and and I don't feel strong enough mm -hmm. to do this mm -hmm. and that's when he says okay you know I get this and then he gives me his truth and right. you can do all things through Christ my son who strengthens you mm -hmm. and that this is a light affliction mm -hmm. this is temporary mm -hmm. and so then we you pull yourself out of your feelings because a lot of the wrong words we speak are driven by when our emotions inform our thoughts and our thoughts become our words and then we begin to speak out of alignment with what God is saying yes and so um, we have to be able to endure Man. and to be strong enough and again that comes from being in his presence mm -hmm. in his presence there's fullness of joy and the joy of the Lord is our strength Yes, yes. And so That's the thing is, point. it's just that he wants us to, a good soldier, you know, it's a chin up. He's not, it's not that he's indifferent because at one time in my life I felt like, well, you just don't care. And it's mm -hmm. nothing could, that was just a lie from the pits of hell, of course. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it's just that when you get into his presence, yes. that's when his love, mm -hmm. his power, everything comes in. And then when you leave, your situation hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. But what's it within you mm -hmm. has changed and you've become to line up mm -hmm. with God in his will and his word for your life. Amen. Amen. So that's a good, a very good point. As a strong woman, we have to endure. And one key thing that we're probably going to talk about Sunday is what you mentioned that I was going to kind of point out in the Holy Spirit edited in now is about part of being a virtuous woman is being militant yeah. um that's and that's what a lot of people don't understand um but we'll go a little bit more into that on tomorrow uh, about another side yes. of that virtuous wo woman is being that militant oh i just can't wait yes um and uh, learning how to endure. Y'all, we're going to go through challenges in life. Um, as she said, things and um, that God had promised us, as she mentioned about the Israelites, God promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. That was a promise from the Father up above. But the thing is, they could not seem to carry out the promise because they allow their emotions um at you know god is taking too long when we're going to do get there every time the prophet spoke every time moses would say something they would counterattack the very vision of god and how many times i can say ouch that i have done that yes. and i had to step get out of god's way and repent for sabotaging what the Lord was promising me. 
Well, Rashida, if you stop, when you come to me, as she mentioned, and you're supposed to come to me, you're supposed to give it to me. Come to me, just worship me. I will fight this battle. You just be, you endure this as a soldier. When you really leave it there with me, I can work. So you don't take it there, and now you call this person and complain. That person that came. We're going, we're going to take the children of Israel more into our day. And we don't understand that there's power in our words. Yes. There is power. Death and life is in the power of our tongues. Yes. So we have to be careful. Are we speaking stuff against our own lives? But like she mentioned, a virtuous woman, as you, we go into the presence of the Lord, we will realize, wait a minute, this is not God's way. This is not God's order. I'm going to speak what God is speaking, regardless of what I don't see, regardless of what, because remember, on this side, we walk by faith and not by natural sight. Yes. So I can't be looking in the natural. I have to see it in the realm of the spirit. So I'm just so grateful for that definition and the way the Lord poured out some things that's even related that we're going to even go a little deeper tomorrow about the strength of a virtuous woman. The strength of a virtuous woman. It all comes from God. Yes. Glory be unto God. Okay, woman of God. I am enjoying this. Oh, me too. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you describe a lady in your bloodline who walks in the lifestyle of a virtuous woman? If so, what do you see in this woman that reflects such attributes? If not, how are you willing to walk accordingly to become that message to others through your godly example? Um, if it's okay, I have two. Okay, great. <laughs> it's my mother um, oh. and my grandmother. Oh, wow. um, I feel like even though we did not have much mm -hmm. as a child, I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And the way they served others, I didn't know. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And one of the things that always my grandmother and my mother were saved, um, my grandmother walked with the Lord. She was a prayer warrior as well. Mm -hmm. Didn't know, you know, of course, as a child, you don't know, you know, when they're in the bathroom, you know, um, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, she was a woman of prayer. My mother was too. Um, they were women of faith. Mm -hmm. And the thing was, was just that they agreed wholeheartedly that God would provide. And one of the things that sh always stuck out to me, particularly for, let's start with my grandmother. She right. was a really great cook. Mm -hmm. And um, she was just a very humble, humble, gentle woman. Mm -hmm. And one of the things was that every holiday, um, we had some people in our neighborhood who were just drug addicts. And the thing was, is that no matter what, how off they always felt that they could come to our house mm. and they called her Miss Dixis and she would always have a plate for them and she had she knew who they were mm. and every holiday she made it a point to set aside plates for those people specifically and the thing was she didn't just you know pass it to them through the door she welcomed them in mm. And the thing was, it's just that and you dare not look at them crazy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and she would just say, you know, God still loves them too. Mm -hmm. And she said, also, everybody has a turn in life. And she said, you never know where you're going to be. Mm -hmm. So you can, and, and despite, you know, and as I got older, especially after my grandfather died, that was a loss of income. And mm -hmm. you began to understand, I was a teenager at that point. And, you know, I'm count, I'm a bean counter, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how are we doing this? <laughs> and the thing was, is that um, she would say, hey, we still have more than others, and we always can give something. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, it's just that um, whether that was her cooking for a funeral repast, um, providing food for the homeless, mm -hmm. or even for people just dropping by. She had a discernment to know 
when people who were just dropping by for a visit, mm -hmm. they were really hungry. Mm -hmm. And yet, for at and that time, she just thought it would be a good time to start fixing a little something to eat, just so they could, you know, have something and not have to. They she didn't put them in a position where they would have to ask for anything. Wow. She was sensitive, you know. They mm -hmm. never asked. She just knew, and. You know, um, she opened her house to. Uh, it was always a safe place. Mm -hmm. um, it was all. It was like a magnet, really. And what would happen? We all walk to school, and other people who would move into the neighborhood, they would just show up, and they would see me, and they would, hey, um, can can my my child come walk to school with your child and they come here after school. Wow. And, you know, it was just the way they, like, with, um, and that part about how she opens her arms to the poor and extends her hand to the needy. This, yeah, and mm -hmm. so, and even with my mother, um, to see her care and compassion just for people, she, she's, I mean, the most caring and loving person because she used to do hair, she would braid and, she would press hair. Mm -hmm. I mean, no one can beat her braiding or pressing hair. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing was, it's just that no child in our in our neighborhood had nappy head. Okay, mm -hmm. it was just like just bring them on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the thing is, it's just that it it didn't it didn't matter. You know, you're good. This ain't got nothing to do with you. This is what I'm going to do for this person. Mm -hmm. And so. It was those things where, you know, the number of people, she would just do their hair, okay? If your child, if it's time to go to school, Easter, you know, anything. Mm -hmm. If your child needs your hair done, just send them my way. Mm -hmm. um, and even as I got older, I never forget, there was this family that moved across the street from us, and those kids were bad. <laughs> I mean, they were just bad. Just be a D, 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 bad. And one day they were playing with a BB gun mm -hmm. and shot her window out mm -hmm. of her door. And I was furious. And I'm like, oh, let's call the police and have them arrested. And, you know, she was like, no, why not? <laughs> you know, they did it. And it was like, and instead of, you know, me, I'm, I'm the law, okay? <laughs> and she, you know, she took it as an opportunity to go yeah. witness to them. Yeah. And I was like, well, you can do it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't all the way in, you know, okay? <laughs> so let's just clarify. I was yeah. not all the way in. Right, right. But the thing was, was just that she saw it as an opportunity to talk to them and to share the word of the Lord. So they ain't bothered about the Lord. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> they should have thought about that before they broke your window out. But the thing is, it's just that this is what she has done. You know, she will go out before she's willing to extend mercy and mm -hmm. kindness um, before judgment and encourage people even when they've transacted something wrong against her. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, just always having a kind word for people. Um, I remember my friends even when I would be away and living on my own, they would go visit my mom mm -hmm. because she always had encouraging words. And so, um, you know, Psalms 20, the Proverbs 31 and 20, 26, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Yes. And then people would go see my mom and I'm like, what you going to see my mama for? <laughs> oh, your mama's smart. Oh, Miss Sharon, you know, she's smart. And one of my friends right here, she would call her baby Jesus. Oh, <laughs> she did. She was like, your mama knew the Lord. You make sure you tell you. And when we would go out, did you tell your mama to pray for us? Mm -hmm. You know, and so it was her walk. Mm -hmm. It was something that they saw in her and it flowed from how she treated them, how she right. spoke to them. And even, even in our midst, she only had time. Yeah, and spoke, you know, y'all gonna y'all gonna go y'all gonna do great things. And I like that. I like that because, you know, actually she's um I love the transparency. You know, she was calling 
the kids back then because she went all the way in yet. Them kids just bad, bad. But her mom, which walked as a virtuous woman, she saw beyond that. She saw the spirit attached to them and she used an opportunity. No, they're not bad. Because you know, as a virtuous woman, we have to be <laughs> we have to be careful <laughs> what we speak over people. We got to be careful. So she had to use wisdom, as she said, faithful instructions, and made sure she spoke the right things. Because guess what? That's all them kids heard. That's it. Be honest. Yeah, that's it. That's that's it. it. So guess what? They going, it's going to manifest. They people in the family saw a couple of little bad. He just they just bad. They just bad. You got a whole neighborhood saying bad. <laughs> Somebody need to take that and turn it the way God would. So I love the transparency that we got to say the right things. Yes. And like she mentioned, she saw that in her bloodline that her mother will speak with wisdom, even though she knew her daughter's name was going to the club, even though she knew what they was about to go do. But she will speak with wisdom over their lives and give them faithful instructions. Not saying she just wouldn't tell them the truth. No. Also speak the truth in love. But she was a wise woman. So that's awesome. Yeah. That you saw that fruit and that character in your bloodline. That's a blessing. That's it a is. blessing. That's a blessing. Is. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory, glory. <laughs> We're going to go to Proverbs 31 and 16 through 19. I want her to kind of expound on this for us. Proverbs 31, 16 through 19. I want you to read it, woman of God, and just expound on it uh, for us to get a little bit more understanding of the character of a virtuous woman. Right. Proverbs 16 through 19. Oh, yeah. She's a busy lady. Yeah. I mean, uh, when I read that, I was like, ooh. <laughs> she leaves, um, it, it, it brought a lot of words and terms to mind for me. Um, specifically, I would say, let's just to say star, she's not idle. She's not a nap star. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Um, she's ambitious. Um, she's a dreamer and visionary. She's intentional. Mm -hmm. She's astute. Mm -hmm. She's confident. She knows her value. Um, she's ever evolving mm -hmm. in the development in her personal development spiritually. She practices self care. Mm -hmm. Um, She's strategic in executing her assignment. <laughs> I like that. Yes, and she's engaged in her community. Um, when I read, I had a vision. This is a woman who's satisfied with within. Um, she has her identity rooted in Christ. She knows who she is, mm -hmm. but she also knows who she is not. Mm -hmm. um, she's industrious. When you start looking at um, she considers a field, that means she's done some research. Mm -hmm. You know, she is forward thinking mm -hmm. um and even her everything she does is on purpose yes. it's not just something she's not going haphazardly through life mm -hmm. she is very strategic and intentional everything she does she's doing it with a purpose like and the thing is it's just that when you start looking you just going down the line all of it's centered on those who are coming after her Mm -hmm. So she is working on building a legacy, mm -hmm. you know, and she's looking out not for just her, herself and hers. She's looking out for her, uh, for others, you I know, like not that. just, you know, she get, well, that was 15, but she's looking out for her servants. She's yes. looking out for other people. So she has a limited an unlimited mindset. She has a mindset of abundance. Yes. That there's room at the table for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and I really like out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, she invests. 
you know, she probably, and they said she did buy some scarlet, so, mm -hmm. you know, she mm -hmm. was fashionable, mm -hmm. but she didn't spend it all mm -hmm. <laughs> at the store. Wise woman. She was a wise woman. She was prudent with her finances. Mm -hmm. She was financially responsible, and she looked for things. If she planted a vineyard, then she expected some fruit Amen. that would bring a profit. Amen. You know, so the thing is, it's just that she was with me, you know, mm -hmm. um, and she worked. Say that, say that W word again. Wealthy. She was wealthy. She was wealthy. She was wealthy. Yes. And then when you start looking about her work, she was diligent, vigorously. She gave it her all. Mm -hmm. This is a woman that I think when you talk about football and sports, you leave it all on the court. You leave it all mm -hmm. on the field. She doesn't do, do anything halfway. Right. There's a spirit of excellence like right. Daniel. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I see. Her arms are strong. And when we say strong, she's taking care of her mental well-being, mm -hmm. making that's sure she's good. strong mentally, that's she's good. strong physically. Yes. You know, because you can't work and do all this stuff that you're she's doing and be unfit physically. Yes. And I think as women, we have to, you know, assess that. Um, not neglect yes because the spirit will not matter this is only one earth suit we don't we, mm -hmm. we can't trade this earth suit in right mm -hmm. this is one body we're not like cars well i'll just go get the 2022 this is the one you come here with mm -hmm. and so the spiritual component what god has taken me through there have been times in which um he's told me in dealing with my you know my own nutrition journey you got to have strength for the journey daughter yeah you got to have this you strong spiritually but you have to be strong physically as well to go to the places that i'm having you to go to mm -hmm. just to work the hours because everything isn't an eight to five mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. and you have to be physically fit to do that um and then so your mental well-being taking time to relax and to decompress and to regroup and refresh yourself um, and to be poured into. Right. Because the thing is, oftentimes as women, in being strong, yes, we just pour and we're pouring from an empty cup. Yes. And we never take the time to be refreshed. Refreshed. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, and again, her arms are strong for her tasks. Yes. Her tasks. Yes. Not anyone else's tasks, mm -hmm. but her tasks. Yes. And so that shows, you know, she was, she was just a woman who understood her assignment. Mm -hmm. um, you look at her trading, I was like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, this was, I mean, and her lamp does not go out at night. Mm -hmm. She was always on, you know, she didn't just, okay, you know, just not to say she worked out of balance, but she worked until the work was done. Mm -hmm. And that's how I interpreted that to me. Right. And, uh, I mean, she, I don't know what a distaff is. Do you? Distaff? Let's look that up. <laughs> I don't think I'll look that one up. But, and grass is spindle with her fingers, but I'm assuming she oh, was maybe like, with something. Yeah, with like a bean or yeah. something. But mm -hmm. the thing was. she the, did do like garments. Right. So. And so, you know, all of this is symbolizing yes, multiple streams of income um, that shows that God doesn't limit us to do just one thing. You know, so for example, yes, I'm an attorney, but I'm also a book author. My favorite, I'm going to write a book, a publishing book. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but e commerce, you, you're not, she didn't limit herself to this is who I am, this is the one thing that I do, and that's it. Because there are seasons you God gives us multiple gifts. Yes. And those things He puts in us, those talents, these are things that are to be a blessing to us to bring resources. And what this says to me, she used everything she got, mm -hmm. God gave her to bring her profit. Amen. Amen. I like that too, um, what she she poured out so many different facts about this particular virtuous woman in the bible and um one of the key things that uh attorney just mentioned this woman of god was very strategic yes she knew the vision 
that God has given her for her own assignment. She knew the gifts that God put in her to bring her wealth, not just uh, wealth for her household, but she was thinking about the next generation as well. As, as she said, she was building a legacy. She wasn't selfish. Another thing that the woman of God uh, mentioned that the spirit man is also, I just want to clarify, the spirit, the spirit part of her was necessary that she build that part of herself to be rich in God, connected in God, that she stayed wise because she had to stay a woman of balance. She had to be a woman of balance because one thing, two mentioned about this woman she wasn't just a wife she wasn't just a mother because you go on down it said her children blessed her praised her i think it said blessed let me get it right the scripture says her children arise and called her blessed yeah look at all the fruit they had a reason to rise my mom is blessed my mama <laughs> My mom is a blessed woman. So not only was she, so she had to be balanced. Not only was she a wife, not only was she a mother, but she was a business woman. Um, she was very strategic. And as she mentioned, God gave us gifts. And there's a parable in the Bible that talks about these different talents. Mm -hmm. And one man, he just going to hide his. And the other person went to multiply it. They began to add more. And God could trust them with more and give them more. So even though, like she mentioned, there are seasons that we all go through. But it, got, it has to be. There was a season where I was a stay-at-home mom for a few years. And it was necessary that I fulfill that proportion of my assignment because I had two children that was dealing with some medical issues. So it was necessary. I wanted to be in the field and go invest some land and go buy some real estate. And, and, and with somebody else's season, they probably could do both at the same time. But that wasn't wise for me because I also had to maintain my mental health. That probably would have been too much for me yes. in that particular season. So the other part of the spiritual, keeping your spiritual diet in line with the vision that God has given you as a virtuous woman for you and your household, you got to take care also of your physical. You have to take care of your mental health. Women of God, we got to take care of our mental health. Yes. We also have to take care of our physical health. <laughs> we could be physically fit to carry out the assignments yes. that God has entrusted to us to do. So we have to be physically fit. We have to, whatever it takes for you to be physically fit, go walking, whatever it takes. Um, Leave the cupcakes alone. Yeah, whatever it takes as it lines up with the Lord, you got to take care of this body. Yes. She said, yep. Yeah, there be season, hey, God say, hey, hey the cupcakes, <laughs> you, have to, you have to put them on hold right now. Um, I need you physically fit because I want you to go do this now. I want you to go do that now. Look at the vision I have given to you. Yes. Look at the next thing that I want you to um, align with heaven, to build in the earth. Um, and I am, and I need your arm. I need your arms to do it. Yes. I need your legs to do it. I need yes. your legs to be able to move. Yes. So we have to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves as well. Physically, emotionally, yes. mentally, and spiritually so. Yes. So every matter, our spirit, every matter of our souls matters when we are planting vineyards. Going out to invest. Now keep in mind, everybody's vision will be different. Um, Her task. Yeah. This is talking about a particular woman of God. 
But whatever your vision is, I do know that every woman of God, God has not called to run a business or several businesses. But there are other tasks that he has given her. As she talked about in her bloodline, her, her grand, your grandmother, yes. one of her grandmother's tasks, your job, feed the community, share the love of Christ to them through that. That was her evangelistic world her globe to show the goodness of God yes. and God used a natural way to do it as well as spiritual so there was different things different talents her mother pressing out people hair so there's different gifts different talents and then some women of God God has given you have multiple strengths and I want you to make a profit because of the vision that I have given you. Amen. But that does not lord. That woman of God does not lord her assignment yes. above other women. Yes. Nor above her husband. Yes. Um, she doesn't think um, she is above him or greater than him. Because I like to tell like some women. The Lord has called them. Some women are called to make more money than their spouses. Right. That's where God graced them. Yes. That they are to make more money than their husband. Hallelujah. I don't know if that's me, but I just say hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that's okay. If yes. that's part of God's will. And if that's part of God's will, you don't lower that income or that over that particular person because at the end it is God that still called the husband to be the head um, and that not to make the husband feel lower than if the woman is bring, bringing in more income um, that's just something that God has graced her in and, and to really that's a blessing yeah. because that woman is wise that woman, as you began, we began to read before that, it even says that this particular woman, mm -hmm. her husband has full confidence in her mm. and lacks nothing of value. So this man of God, so I'm going to use that scenario. If this woman of God is called even, God has graced her more in the financial world. This man of God sees the Christ in his woman of God. He is secure. Yes, he, is. he is confident. She is submitted to the will of God. And he is not going to allow. He's going to make sure he's whole. He's not going to allow insecurity to interfere with the hand of the Lord moving through her life. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's going to push her. Hey, go forward. I anoint you in the name, name of, of the Lord. Lord. Hey, Amen. glory. Woo, can we get an amen, amen right there? Because I know my man of God, baby, if God, baby, go wow. in the name of the what will not have an issue. And then there are some cases where the men are graced in that particular area mm -hmm. um, to have more. We're just talking about the area of finances now. Mm -hmm. To have more that God has given him a financial vehicle to finance his family legacy. Sometimes it's on the women, the woman, sometimes it's on the man, and then sometimes, listen to this, sometimes the assignment could be that they can have one assignment that they would do together in business, and it's going to be of the legacy of the household. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Family on business. What you say, God. So we just have to make sure we stay balanced and we just have to make sure that we are fulfilling what God wants us to fulfill in his strength mm -hmm. and wisdom. Because this particular man that looks at his look at his bride, I have full confidence in her. Mm -hmm. I, I, I understand the assignment on her life. I would not restrict her nor restrain her. In other words, I'm praying her. I'm covering her mm -hmm. as I should. I am. God positioned me as the head. I understand the calling upon her life. 
And I'm going to make sure that I go even higher in the realm of the spirit to make sure she is covered before she go to that bin, y'all. That's it. Before she go to the investment table. Before she go and vice versa also with yes. the women. That's being a wise woman of God. Because anything, I'm going to tell, tell you for me. Anything that God is give, given into my hands to build, I don't look at it. It's mine. I'm building it for the family through Christ Jesus. But I do understand. But it is an assignment God has given to me personally that I can't push on parents. Right. You see what I'm saying? But there will be some assignments that God would maybe call us to partner together. But even in my personal assignments, hey, we're doing this because a virtuous woman she is not selfish. A virtuous woman is not trying to take glory that don't even belong to her. It belongs to the Lord. I know you want to tap in. No, I just, no. Did you good. want to tap in? No, it's good. I mean, everything you're saying is so correct. Yes. In its own time, especially in the world that we live in. Yes. Um, today. And the thing is, it's okay. We don't have to be competitive. Right. You know, because it's sort of like for for the one you're you're not because you can easily read what she's done mm -hmm. and become intimidated. Like, mm -hmm. do I need to level up? No, you just need to do your what, assignment. Your assignment, and and be content because yeah. this is something she was graced to do. That's right. And I think that's one of the things that we can learn as women to be satisfied within. Um, because, for example, I don't know if you know, have noticed now the message is everyone needs to get start a business. Mm -hmm. Every need, everyone needs to do this. Well, not necessarily, as you said. And I think we need to, you know, for the body of Christ's kingdom, that's not going to be everybody's trajectory, depending upon the season you're mm -hmm. in. So I really appreciate you expounding upon that to know that everyone will not be called to do the same exact thing um because it's about what god has equipped you and built you to carry we're not all built the same way Amen. we're like you know you have a sports car you know a maserati can't carry what a suburban can carry mm -hmm. if that makes sense Amen. but they both have a purpose and they both have they have a function and they have a purpose and both are important Amen. Not one is diminished by the other. Amen. 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 And that's a good point. You you really, we really have to make sure we are carrying out the assignment, the tasks that God has for us. Um, husband and wives are not competing. Best friends are not competing. Um, sisters in the kingdom is not competing. So that takes me to the very last question I wanted us to expound on. Mm -hmm is as a virtuous woman I honestly believe in crowning other virtuous women with honor mm -hmm. the Bible says in Proverbs 31 and 31 honor her for mm -hmm. all her hands have done not worship her there is a scripture that says we are to honor our mother and our father mm -hmm. um, it says let her work bring her praise how can we as women of God demonstrate this scripture more? Unfortunately, we have seen the world and some in the church who are jealous of one another, discredit each other, and simply don't know how to encourage other women. How can we change this within the body of Christ where we lift up the Christ within each other and glorify our Father with our hearts and character? So as women, I know that was kind of asking a lot, but to sum it up, how can we demonstrate this where we are truly lifting up different um, women in the body of Christ, uh, not discrediting them, but just encouraging them to fulfill their assignments? Right. Um, I think when the first thing was that one, talk about it, confront it, and deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, because the thing is, it's just that sometimes as women, even in the body of Christ, we don't recognize. Jealousy is an emotion. God mm -hmm. gave us those emotions, right? 
but those emotions are not meant to go unchecked. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, we have to talk about that these are feelings that will rise up in a believer. And as a believer, you feel those emotions, but you don't necessarily, we don't talk about what to do with them in a healthy way. And all of that's rooted in rejection. Mm -hmm. So we have to be aggressive in dealing with the spirit of rejection, knowing that we have a spirit of adoption. And then God in Psalms 139, he tells us that he knitted us, he's formed us. He knows everything about us. He numbers our days. He has a set plan individually for all of us. Mm -hmm. And guess what? He said his plans for us are for good and not evil. So that means he, we all got a good plan uniquely exactly. designed and tailored just for me, just for you, and just for every other woman on this broadcast. Amen. You got something good, mm -mm, good just for you, something with your name on it that he did not give to anyone else because we are his original unique design. Amen. And so, one, let's put a framework there. You don't want something that does not fit you. Amen. David did not want to wear Saul's armor. Look, just give me my fire rods and a slingshot. Mm -hmm. He he did not despise, and even though those are two men, the principle that's, is that's, the same. Right. He knew what fit him. Right. And no, no, thank you, thank you. But God meant that for you. Mm -hmm. Give me my rocks and a slingshot. And that's what's important. And sometimes we can be in denial, mm -hmm. you know, about what we feel inside. Um, and just a moment of transparency, a personal situation, and to show you what this looks like. Of course, many people knew I did not pass the bar exam the first time I took it in 2019. Um, that was February. Mm -hmm. And so the thing was, it came around um, October of that year. My friends had taken it in July. And it was approaching that time and I realized I was feeling some type of anxiety, you know, mm -hmm. about it because I'm like, oh, I should be in that number. And the thing was, I began to tell the Lord, I felt the jealousy rising up, okay? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. I should have been there, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm like, Lord, I know what you said. So mm -hmm. what happened? But I brought it up and I went to it and I started counseling. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that this that, that was traumatizing to me. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I've never failed at anything in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's just, you know, to be just right. on a very real, genuine level. And I needed some help processing that. And one of the times I talked to my therapist, I said, look, I don't want to. These are my friends. These are people who I love. These are highly esteemed colleagues who deserve, right. you know, this bar license, okay? And I want to be able to celebrate them. Amen. I want to be able to congratulate them. I don't want to be a sourpuss, you know, the day results come out. And I'm, you know, bemoaning, thinking about my own disappointment. Right. I want to be able, I want it to be not just the fake, congratulations, girl. Mm -hmm. No, I want it to be genuinely happy. Amen. About that. And the thing was, it's just that if I had not acknowledged it, okay? That's a good point. I, I acknowledged it. Mm -hmm. I talked about it. Amen. And we dealt with it. Amen. And, okay, you know, and God gave me some specific things to do. And if we did, if we were more intentional about acknowledging, okay, you know, when you've been waiting for something, and you mm -hmm. see someone else go, you know, I took it before, you know, I graduated or I'm like I was supposed to be leading the pack. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it wasn't my turn. Yes. And so how to to talk to people on a real level of mm -hmm. what this really looks like. Mm -hmm. Because we say, well, don't be jealous. Mm -hmm. Well, easier, you know, okay. But there's a practical side mm -hmm. of that. And we have to help people when we see people it's about accountability too mm -hmm. and understanding okay how deal with what you're feeling and it's just a feeling it's mm -hmm. an emotion mm -hmm. but we're not ruled by our emotions mm -hmm. and so i think 
before you know like you and you and I have talked about some things mm -hmm. and, and it's about being transparent because he says confess our faults to one another right right you understand what I'm saying right so somebody and you've been able to give me perspective right on things okay to get God's heart because you can't cancel yourself you will lie to yourself okay yeah, yeah. so that means opening yourself up your book of life to someone else for inspection okay I'm reading this I'm reading that okay this is where I see the problem mm -hmm. because you can't identify your own issues mm -hmm. but it helps when we have one another mm -hmm. to one help us deal with it but then show us how to walk it out right. and the thing is and also it was intentional mm -hmm. that day I got up and I went you know when they were online because we go online looking at the scores like hitting refresh 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 until the magic list pops up okay mm -hmm. you know the past list pops up and i read it and i was like yes you know because i had prayed mm -hmm. and i asked god you know one it i'll be there i got next you see what i'm right, saying right. i got next because i got a promise right so i'm gonna be in that number just not now mm -hmm. okay right so no it was just not right now right and so the thing was was just that i didn't send a text mm -hmm. i called Right. each and every person congratulate. and congratulated them mm -hmm. and it was a joy because you confronted it yeah i confronted it yeah and yeah. so and i think sometimes we're never we're not necessarily as open right about when we have you know experienced right. that emotion right. and to give people a context because i'm a okay yeah i hear what you're saying but i need something practical exactly can you give me a concrete example not something hypothetical or theoretical mm -hmm. but this is i want people to have an example mm -hmm. that of what what that looks like mm -hmm. and that is something that we all have encountered and once you do it once practice mm -hmm. makes perfect mm -hmm. practice, make, practice makes perfect mm -hmm. and it becomes easier and easier because it's sort of like we have to die mm -hmm. decrease that he may increase mm -hmm. you know and then it's mind renewal cast that down you cast down vain imagination every high thought that exalt itself against the knowledge of god for our unmarried sisters you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. that's something you know when we see sister she's engaged i was gonna bring that point out <laughs> You know, yeah. that's and, 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 yeah. and that's it's a just, real talk. It's a real talk. You know, these are the things it's been particularly in the kingdom. Yeah. We see that, you know, Christmas time is coming around. It's engagement season. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. and if you're not in that number, mm -hmm. okay. You know, it's it, it's, it's your time is coming, but to know what to do with it. Or when you see your sister, it's a promotion in the kingdom. Because yes. also, you know, we see it in that realm as well. And I think we need to be ready to have, I don't know what that looks like, fireside chats, but just get down and dirty mm -hmm. with this negative emotion mm -hmm. and showing people how to, how to deal with it. Because this is stuff, as you said, it's stuff in the bloodline. Yeah. Because people want to be happy, but they, it's probably something underneath mm -hmm. that's inhibiting them. Mm -hmm. And so a part of that may be deliverance and then it's just the other side. No, you're going to die to yourself and crucify your flesh mm -hmm. and you're going to rise above it. And you're right. not going to yield to it. I'm not going to receive that thought. Right. You see what I'm saying? Uh-uh. Let this mind be in me that is in Christ Jesus. Because the thing is, it's just that even when you get the underlying issue cast out, you still going to have to make a decision. Yeah to not receive the, to not receive and yield to this particular emotion mm -hmm. and when and also i found was that the second part was when i became good with me mm -hmm. i got my hard work done mm -hmm. and when i was good with me and got another level of inner healing and deliverance mm -hmm. i could be good yeah. Hey, you know, right. and when we begin to become whole, that's it. Wholeness, right? When you are walking, and we have to, and wholeness 
is intentional. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something we have to pursue because it's God. He don't want us just heal. He wants us heal and whole. Mm -hmm. As though it never happened. And when you get a level of wholeness, it again it becomes easy mm -hmm. because it's sort of like your mindset has changed right and again you have allowed God to come in and transform you and he's and when you know who he is to you mm -hmm. and that nothing can separate us from his love mm -hmm. oh girl what you got going on oh my gosh you said I'm saying you can genuinely rejoice for your sisters. Mm -hmm. But again, I think it's something that has to be taught. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, I think, I think that's just, yeah, make a decision and talk about it and deal with it. This is really good. Um, because I like the first thing that she mentioned, dealing with when jealousy arrives. We know when jealousy come up, it is a spirit. And jealousy attacks or manifests through our emotions. Mm -hmm. It manifests through our emotions. And like she said, I'm a very practical person. I'm very strategic. Okay, God, it's something going on in me. I know what the scripture says. I, don't be jealous. Don't be envious. But God, break this down. Yes. Show me how to work this out. Also, what the strategy that the Lord gave her was when, when that spirit tried to manifest through, your, through our emotions, because it has happened to all of us, mm -hmm. um, through our emotions, the strategy that the Lord gave her, and which is for all of us today, you've got to confront it. Because let me tell you what happens if you don't. If you don't confront it, first of all, the scripture says, if we try to hide our sin, we will not prosper. Not prosper. That's the word. If we try to hide it, we won't prosper. So, the first thing, you got to confront it. You got to acknowledge in the mirror of the word, God, I agree with you. I'm not happy for my friend. Come on, y'all. Let's get real. Yep. I'm not happy for my friend. Because I'm going to tell you, if it is not dealt with, it's going to grow. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. What will happen? If she would have never dealt with that spirit in her emotions, when she finally passed the bar exam, oh, she was going to be a proud peacock. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, uh-huh, because she was been carrying that for all of those years just to show off. And how could God really get the glory? How is that the character of a virtuous woman? Right. And I remember a time being transparent years ago, giving my life to the Lord. I mean, when I tell you some sacrifices Terrence and I has made financially, just going through different things financially, all type of things. Somebody come talk to me. Well, I just got this and I just got that and I just got this and I went to God. I was mad. I wasn't genuinely happy. I was mad and I went to God. See, I know how to confront stuff yeah. with me. I said, God, she get all that stuff. She ain't even serving you. Real talk. Now, God, I serve you. I've been persecuted. I still serve you. I know this helping somebody. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> I'm serving you. I pray for people that don't even like me. I go do, look, listen, I'm saying all these eyes. I do this, I do that, I do da 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 da. And the Lord returned to me, or you, you show sure saying a lot of eyes, ain't you? Mm -hmm. You what, what what you were doing is so I could reward you with things. What 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 mm -hmm. what what? what, what the what's all this for? So I began to receive a reflection of myself mm -hmm. that I didn't see in the beginning. Yes. 
So when the mirror turned, he said, you're in my kingdom. You are part of me. I reign on the just as well as the unjust. And who's to say everything that she's getting, are they coming through my hands? Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's so if you want to go and go out of season and do your own thing to prove a point, I don't want that for you. That's not my will. But if you would just humble yourself and take a reflection. So then as the Lord began to deal with Rashida Davis heart, deal with me about that. I had a total different approach, even about things, even about all other stuff. Because I began to realize, don't y'all know things don't make us. It's not about the house you live in, the car you drive. The things that you have. That's not. God, God can easily. Give us anything. Yes. But he's looking at. The condition of our hearts. Amen. Amen. That's, that's the part. That God was after. So through that experience. Because. When the Lord began to shift from things. Because I was in a season. Of suffering. Mm -hmm. Financially. I was in that season. So when that came and that conversation came, the Lord just had to reveal some things that was within wow. me. So when the next time came and another person came around and they had some, I was like, glory to God. Lord, yes. I thank you. And I, and I was still in a hard place. Yes. But it was okay. Because guess what? As she mentioned, I addressed the issue. I went to the Lord. I asked him, and, I, and I'm pretty sure I probably confessed it to a close friend or somebody to pray me through that in that particular season. I did not hide my sin. I did not try to pretend I was okay or fake it. I was sincere about the issue that was in my heart. So I could take the appropriate steps so I could be whole, healed, and my heart could be genuinely pure when I am congratulating others. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you this too. I, you know, with, with my walk with God now, my serious walk with God, because as a virtuous woman, one of the key things that we're gonna realize. Is walking in the fear of God. And, and through I've been saved now, I think, 20 years. And that is something, some things, guys, I have been through with the Lord. And the fear of the Lord, I'm talking about it's in my toes. <laughs> the fear of the Lord is just upon me so that I don't want nothing to separate me from God. So anything God reveal, I want him to deal. And I come to a point to realize that it's all about us, Attorney Ashley, fulfilling. I walk in the fear of God now. It's all about Rashida now. I'm about now fulfilling the purpose, the assignment that's on my life. I have no reason to be discredited. I have no reason to be hidden jealous. My The way the Lord has built me, I am a pusher. I am a builder. I like to build other women. Okay, God told you to do this, uh, 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 attorney. We're about to make some stuff happen through the strength of the Lord. Through the strength of God. So, the Lord will begin to do such a work that you fear God. In such a way that I, you'll understand it's just not my season. Mm -hmm. And that's how you have to also counterattack those spirits. You mm -hmm. deal with it first. You go to God in prayer. You ask God to take it out. You cast down those imaginations. Yes. Everything that's trying to exalt you above the will of God. Yes. You want God to get the glory. Yes. And if God shows you that you're trying to take self-glory, you ask God to deal with that spirit. Yes. 
Because that's the same spirit Lucifer functioning. Functioning. That's what he wanted. He wanted all applause on him. He, he wanted the, the, the people, the angels, to bow down to him. And when God take it, take, take it to you like that, that is so uh, um, raw, you'll begin to function in a whole nother different mindset. And then what happens, woman of God? Your mind become renewed. Yes. The way you process things. So now the way I process people's achievement, attorney, that I process it now, I thank God you're fulfilling the assignment on your life. Yes. It, it's a total different makeup now. Yes. You're now in the perfect will of God. It is it is it is your season. Yes. I may be in a season of going through, but now. I got a projection from heaven. I got a revelation from heaven. I got I, my mindset has been wired and trained yes. different. Hallelujah. That I can still speak into a life. Yes. I can still help her mm. Mm. write out whatever she needs, whatever assistance. And even, even, even now, through a time where God may have me, but if God has called me a part of her plan to help her in an area, I can genuinely wow. be a part of that with no strings attached. Hallelujah. Not wanting her, okay, when she get to that position, now, now this is a good one, when she get to her status, remember me now. See? Hmm. I may not be a part of that next level. Wow. We Now that's deeper. Yeah, that is. Because That's deeper mm -hmm. because people think, no, 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 no. Your part was to do what I told you to do in that season. Ooh. But in the next chapter, it, it ain't that God just said, uh-uh. You, now you want a part to go to that. I, that If you do that, you're going to be a distraction to her. And she may be a distraction to you or vice versa. I got this whole other agenda that's so much greater than you could even imagine. Wow. Jeremiah 29, 11. Yes. For I know the plans yes. that I have for you. Yes. I know the plans. Amen. So we definitely stay close to God, confront things that is not of God, so we can stay in the character of a virtuous woman. Yes. And to sum it up, anything else you would like to say before we... We eat. I don't know. I think um, let's just stay close to the fire during this time. Amen. A virtuous woman stays close to the fire. Amen. And that goes a lot to, you know, just prayer. Amen. And staying in his presence. It has been a pleasure. Amen. To be a part of this talk show. Um, I hope everyone found something. Everyone heard a word that was personalized to them and their situation and everything that was said. Amen. And I just thank, pray that God gets the glory for it all. Amen. And that's what this is about. It's about Christ being glorified through everything that we do. And the, the prayer talk show, it was given to, to me through the Holy Spirit because I really truly believe that the Holy Spirit wants to transform uh, women of God, yes. men of God, in a powerful way. It's all about giving him glory. So I thank you all so much for tuning in. And I just want y'all to give the God of heaven a hand clap for attorney Ashley Jefferson. We give God all the credit Amen. and all the knowledge um, for what he has poured uh, on us today. And I thank God for her um, transparency. I thank God for her just um, being who she is and delivering the word of God in the way that God gave her. And I want y'all to join us tomorrow. Tomorrow, we will also um, have two other guests. And it will be my spiritual mom, Prophetess Ileana Pratchett. And we will have Elder Melanie Johnson. We will go over maybe some of the same um, questions 
but we will um, meet tomorrow at 2202 State Line Road, South Haven, Mississippi, right here at the School of Intercession Global Ministry at 11.30 a.m. Please get here on time. Please get here on time so you can get your seat. We're so excited because we're going to go even higher. After the talk show, we're going to flow because this is a prayer talk show. We don't just talk. We pray. Amen. We pray. So you make sure you be in the house because we're going to talk and then we're going to definitely go in and we're going to pray. So I'm so excited. Thank you so much, woman of God. Thank you, woman of God. This has been so impactful. It's been so blessed. She has poured out um, the word of the Lord to us. And I'm so excited. See you tomorrow. And God, share this, share this, share this. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 11.30 a.m. In-person service talk show. Love you. I'm Prophetess Rashida Davis. And this is Attorney Ashley Jefferson. We'll see you tomorrow at 11.30 a.m.